I'm Matt Evers, a professional skater and lover of winter sports. Now the highlight for anyone passionate about winter sports has to be the Winter Olympics. It is a 17-day, action-packed, adrenaline-fueled competition. But you don't have to be an Olympic hopeful to get a taste for the ice and snow. I'm in the Savoie Mont Blanc region of the French Alps, which is home to some of the best skiing in Europe. Back in 1992, nearby Albertville hosted the Winter Olympics, which is where freestyle skiing became an Olympic event. Freestyle skiing is all about gravity-defying creativity. Athletes flout danger to perform stunts and tricks mid-air whilst hurtling down mountains or kicking off obstacles to perform bigger, braver, and ultimately higher value routines. It wasn't always this acrobatic though. Legendary pioneer Stein Erikson became skiing's first superstar in the 50s and is credited for giving the sport its air. He combined his gymnastic background with his competitive Olympic talent and made history with his somersault on skis. This was quite popular with the recreational skiers and the style quite literally took off. Don't be fooled by the goofy trick names like the Lincoln Loop, Flare in the Pipe, and the Alley Oop. These feats take immense skill and precision to master, and took a long time to be recognized as an official sport. The jumps in the first official mogul run hosted here in 1992 were nothing in comparison to what we see today. Over the years, they've grown taller and steeper to allow for more elaborate tricks and inevitably new and exciting events. Ski cross, downhill racing over obstacles, is one of the most popular and chaotic competitions in freestyle. There's nothing better than watching people go head to head. With alpine racing, you're going looking at people are looking at timed runs, you kind of have to know what's going on. Whereas ski cross, they can look at it, see people crashing, see people going wide, like lots of things happening, jumping, going for the line, and ultimately, yes. first one across the finish line wins. There's a kind of few myths about the sport. It's not full rugby on skis. However, it does, <laughs> does, <laughs> does have a little bit of that, but you're not like deliberately allowed to kind of like grab each of Rawi and stuff. A lot of the time, you know, some of the big jumps are, are really intimidating. You, you can come up to them and you, you see them for the first time. You think, that's, that's pretty big, um, you know? Yes, I'm excited, but I am scared. I was an alpine racer, so, you know, I, I raced downhill and it was really fast, like up to 90 miles an hour. So, you know, I, I was kind of used to speed and, and adrenaline and I moved over to ski cross and I was like, this is terrifying. You know, I, I'd never had anything like it before. Uh, but, you know, I think that kind of adrenaline kind of fuels you fear. and no, yeah, fear. it really, really fuels you. And some people can go either way, you know, they can kind of come back a wee bit from it and be a bit intimidated, or you can just go for it, which is, I guess, what, what we try yeah. to do. So. And, the, and the safest way to do it as well. Speaking from experience, when you combine speed with gymnastics, the margin for error is tiny. Add to that the fact that you are doing it on ice or snow and the danger levels go through the roof. These are really brave athletes who always push the boundaries, and that's what makes the sport so great to watch.